Hey, how's it going? Hey, Rav is doing good so far. Just wanted to ask Lucas, I'm learning about novation. And as I get along, I'm trying to grasp, like dive deeper into it. So we, we set like a contract and then they sign and then we find buyers and then sign an assignment right after. So, but when closing, do they need to close on the same day? So what an ovation is, so I know it's confusing because you have your cash offer, which is your close quick, we're buying or we're finding a buyer that can buy really quick. But a lot of times if you do it right, we'll get on, we'll be put on the hook for it if we don't find a buyer, but it's usually a good enough deal for us to buy for a cash deal. So that's going to be, what's your cash formula if it's a cash deal? Um, let me share. And I'll get to the novation part, but it's just important to understand all of them. So that's ARV, and then how much is it again? ARV multiplied by 70%, and then we deduct the repairs and the 20 grand fee. It's 70% of the ARV. So what you'll do is find after repair value, meaning the house is completely fixed up. That would be your ARV. All right, not as is. That's market condition, unless it's brand new. So ARV is completely fixed up. You multiply that number by 70% because that gives you a 30% discount. All right, that takes into account a lot of stuff. So you need that 30%. 70% ARV minus repairs minus our fee. That's your cash deal. That's how we're able to close quick because it's usually pretty steep discount. Say that they want close to retail, but there's probably a 60 or 70K spread total because your formula is market value minus 10% for closing cost minus what we're trying to make, which is a 30K fee, which doesn't always happen. It's rare that we get a 30K fee on those a lot of times because if you don't get enough of a discount, you rarely get a full price off. But anyways, innovation, we need at least 60 days because we're going to send them a contract. It's going to be a purchase agreement. But we're going to be straight up and say, hey, look, we're going to put this on the market. We're going to cover all closing costs. The reason we're able to get you the price that you want is because we feel that we can mark it up and pay all the closing costs and still make our fee. So the guy that was telling you, I want these clauses because I want to do this and that, or I want to close in 15 days, it's just not feasible because we're having to go find buyers. We're having to put it on the market. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, it makes sense. It makes sense. It's just making them understand because what's confusing about an ovation is you can go just list it with a realtor, right? And that's what they're thinking. Well, I can just go list it for full price. It's, yeah, you could. But the reason we're offering you this other thing is we're going to handle everything just like a realtor would. Our fee is going to be baked in there. But basically, you just want to do business with us instead of your realtor. That's the difference. And we're going to okay. cover the closing costs. You don't have to think about all of that. Okay. Okay. I'll make sense now. Okay. What's a good novation? What's a good property for a novation? What's a good situation for a novation? Novation comes in if, if like a property is above 120 to 150 grand. That's when... I wouldn't put a dollar amount on it. You're not wrong. Lower end properties are tougher to make a fee and put them in retail and move them and all that. You're not wrong, but it's going to be your properties that don't need a lot of work that are nicer, that can go on the regular market and sell without investors coming in wanting to give a really low offer because it needs a ton of work. Yeah. Your novations, your best novation deals are going to be the ones that don't need a ton of work. They could need updating, right? The best novations are the properties that just need updating, but they don't need work. There's not a hole in the roof. The foundation isn't crooked. There's nothing crazy with it. It just maybe hasn't been updated since the 80s or something. That's a good novation. Yeah, just, it, I just want to understand the assignment part. Once we work with the end buyer, what happens once we have an assignment okay. until closing? Cool. So we've got one I'm going to send you here shortly that we're actually going to have to do an innovation agreement, almost called an indemnification agreement because that's what it's labeled. But so we send a purchase contract, they sign it. We have one right now. It's just like this. It's a retail house. There's nothing wrong with it. It just needs update. All right. We have it under contract for 295000 So that would be nice. 295000 we have it under contract for. We just received a cash offer for 340000 Since it's a cash offer, 
I can actually send an assignment. It's very difficult on the retail market to send an assignment because realtors do not freaking understand. But technically, since it's a cash offer, you can send an assignment of contract, of your original contract, assign it to the end buyer. All right. Now, however, here's why an ovation uh, agreement's important. Say that they get a loan from a bank. A bank doesn't care that we are signing a contract. They're not going to pay our assignment fee. That's not how banks work. They're not going to say, oh, Jill got this property and they're novating it and there's a fee. No, nah, they don't do that. So most traditional buyers have a bank loan. So what we have to do is we have this original contract. We get an offer. All right, we're like, all right, cool. So then we send a, a novation agreement. And all a novation means is that you're replacing one contract with another. That's all it is. People are like, oh, innovation is when you put on the MLS. You do put them on the MLS, but that's not innovation. Innovation is when you replace this contract with another. So we get it under contract for X amount. We get an offer. Cool. So now we go back to seller and we say, here's our innovation agreement. This says, hey, look, we have this under contract for $295,000. You're about to get a contract that says... 340,000. I want you to know you're not receiving any of that. You're getting the 295 that we agreed on. We're going to cover all the closing costs as we agreed on. We're going to hold up our end. This novation agreement is just saying you're going to hold up your end before we send you this new contract and we're going to skip to the finish line. They sign the labeled the novation identification agreement. So now our contract is replaced and we bring in this new one and the seller signs the new contract. So now title, since this is that the title company has this novation contract, and they say, okay, y'all agreed on 295. This new one says 340. So now y'all have $45,000 that's y'all's. But you've got to pay all these closing costs. So we're going to take out of that $45,000, we are going to take all these closing costs. And here's what you're left with, which in that situation is probably like $15,000. There's a lot of moving parts. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm seeing the bigger picture now. Do we always use the indemnification the in no every novation? The novation, just call it a novation agreement. And the reason it's novation and indemnification is what the indemnification means is you hold us harmless. Like we can't be held liable for crap. We're the middle people. We're connecting two people. We're connecting a seller. We're connecting a buyer. You cannot hold us liable for anything. That's all that means. And yes, if you're going to actually novate a contract, you should have this agreement signed. So to answer your question the novation and indemnification. It could be called whatever, but it needs to do those two things. It needs to disclose or remind, hey, we're under contract for this amount. You're about to get this new contract for X amount. Mm -hmm. You're going to hold us, you're not going to get hold us liable for anything. And a lot of people get that signed first. They get that signed with the original contract. I, however, I like to do it before I send the new contract to them because it's a reminder. That's just my preference. Because if I have this and they sign all this paperwork and then I send them a contract for 45000 more, they're like, hey, I want this. I don't have to explain that. The reason I send the novation first is, hey, read this, sign it. You remember this, right? Yeah, okay, cool. The new one's coming. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. you have any other questions? No, I am good. But if I do, I'll thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lucas. And you always want to leave your room, yourself room like a buffer. Like in this instance, I wanted to make thirty thousand. We're gonna end up between ten and fifteen, which is fine. That's good money, but you want to leave yourself that thirty thousand buffer because you see what happened to us. If we would only left ourselves a ten thousand buffer, we wouldn't have been able to do the deal. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Awesome. Ask if you need anything. Thank you so much. All right, bye bye.